You are listening to Revealing Real Estate Podcast, where we dive into getting over your fear of taking risk in real estate and making money while you sleep. I'm Nico Pedizano, your host and real estate guru with over 20 years of experience. It's time to get real. Hey guys, it's Nico Pedizano and welcome back to Revealing Real Estate. We have a wonderful guest, Hem Byatt from Prime America, who's now on our show for the third time. For those that don't know Hem, uh, Hem has 10 years of financial service experience and the knowledge we need to make a better financial decision. Hem is a bachelor in business, business administration, accounting and taxation, a master's certificate in project management and an LLQP and, a, and completed courses in the Canadian investment funds and branch management from the IFSA Institute. He developed a seminar series called How Money Works, which he has been sharing with professionals and beginners alike and now with us today. His belief in life balance Discipline in spending, saving, and setting life priority inspires clients and guests at his seminars. On top of his professional success, he is a husband, a father, and a community leader. Helm, I just want to welcome you back to the show. Thanks for coming back again. Well, uh, we've had some wonderful, wonderful episodes together, so I really needed you to get back out. Yes, well, thank you for inviting me again. This is the third time, and uh, every time we meet, like we have discussed all different topics. So even today's topic is going to be completely different than what we have discussed before. And there's yeah. so much to learn about money. You know, your, your title of how money works, man, you should write a book on that because I think there's a lot of literacy when it comes to that. And really investing outside of real estate is is making people understand opportunities that are out there. Um, I, I, I My portfolio is really heavily set on real estate, but... You know, there's a lot of things that you can do for people to get creative, to start earning income and start making money and letting their money work for them um, uh, daily. Right? Yes, that is so true. I mean, there are so many different ways people can understand money first, uh, also get some financial literacy, and then that's how they can just start moving forward to invest the money. Yeah. So let's talk about right now RRSPs. Um, RRSPs. Right now, the contribution, I think, is coming out at the end of the month, which is which is going to come February. Yeah. So generally speaking, the deadline is March 1st. But because this is leap year, uh, so this year, the deadline is February 29th. I, I'm going to start by asking you this. Are RSPs for everybody? A retired savings plan, is that for everybody? And should everybody be invested into RSPs? So let me, let me just backtrack a little bit yeah. and talk about what is RRSP and how it works. Sure. Um, so what the RRSP is, it's the registered uh, savings plan for, for any individual who are taxpayers in Canada. And they can keep paying into RRSP until they turn 71. Now, what RRSP does, um, whatever contribution someone makes into RRSP, then they will get the tax refund on that money. So when they file the tax return, that's when they get the T-slip and then that basically tells them well, how much you've contributed and that's how uh, they get the tax refund on that money. Now, the government launched this plan because back then they thought that people were not saving money enough. And uh, yes, we have this CPP and old debt security in place, but uh, obviously it is not enough, especially the, the cost of everything has gone up. So... Uh, average payout, I would say, uh, which is CPP and old debt security, let's say if someone has been receiving it, they will get probably around $15,500 per year, which is almost nothing. Which so you not, you can survive on that than, uh, What it works out to, just over $1,000 a, a month. True. So, so now when they launched this program, the whole idea was that to tie people into some sort of incentive so that allows people to put more money into RRSP. So that's how this RRSP was launched, introduced. And like I said, when you put money in, you pay, you save the tax on it. When you take the money out, then you pay the tax back. Now, right. the concept is also you should not touch RRSP before you're retired. Otherwise, it is going to mess up with your tax. But normally, um, when you start redeeming funds from RRSP, then what happens is that you actually fall into lower tax bracket, the marginal tax bracket, right? So, so that's the kind of concept. But there are trillions of dollars room available today as we speak that people have not contributed into RRSP. And that could be for various reasons. Maybe people don't understand how it works. Maybe they think that, well, this is not good for me. Uh, maybe they think that, well, you know what, 
why do I save money now and then pay the tax later? So, right. like I said, there are so many um, uh, like dynamics in this particular program, and I think that's why people don't save enough. Now, going back to your question, is RRSP good for everybody? My answer is yes and no. So it all depends on the situation of that particular family, of the client, and then that's how the RRSP can be established. So yes, it is not for everyone, but it, because it all depends on like what stage of their life they, they actually are at, and then that's how that can be implemented. So I guess it's for somebody who's going to invest into RSP, get a tax benefit from it by investing now, um, the key strategy to that would be investing into um, some type of fund, um, put it into the stock market as you can. You can self-direct it. You can put it, you, you, there's money management like yourself that would uh, invest that money for them so that that money would have earned a return on that investment over the course of the time frame, maybe 20 years or 30 years. By the time they have to retire, they've accumulated a larger sum of money and then when they have to withdraw from that, then they, w- they would pay tax on that money. That is true. So they can they can put money in. And uh, the whole idea, like I said, is as long as they don't touch that money until they are retired, then when they start taking money out, it will fall into lower marginal tax bracket. So that's the only thing people need to know, that you have to be very disciplined when, you're, when you start investing money into RRSP. Go ahead. Did you want to finish off on that? No, no, no. You're, no, good. I, no. you're good. So yeah. my thing is, is, is that you know some people say, oh, I um, uh, sh- should everybody be invested into RSPs? In your, in your, is it, is it for everyone? RRSP? Yeah. Would you think that everybody should be doing it? Is there certain exceptions where people say, hey, you know, I, I there's really no reason for me to be invested into RSPs. See, it is, it is a saving and it's an investment for the long term, mm-hmm. right? So. If you ask me from that aspect, definitely people should start saving, investing money. It can be invested in a mutual fund. It can be invested in a segregated fund. And then that's how those strategies can be implemented. Mm -hmm. There are also ways where people can understand that there is a spousal RRSP. So let's say John and Mary. John is a high income earner. Mm -hmm. Mary is a low income earner. John can contribute under Mary's name. So Mary is an account holder. John Mm -hmm. is the contributor. And John will benefit from the tax. So even though that RRSP goes under Mary, John will benefit from the tax refund. Mm -hmm. And that money can stay in that account for more than two years. Then now Mary owns that account fully. So when that money comes out from that RRSP account, the tax will fall under Mary's hand and not John's hand. So they already saved high amount of tax, and now they can actually fall into oh, lower, know that. Yeah, that's lower pretty marginal good. tax bracket. Yeah, that's pretty. That's pretty insightful. Um, how did? But I, I think we just want to. I want to dummy this down a little bit for for people that don't really understand RSPs right now. Yeah. How can they save on tax? So if I if somebody earned a hundred thousand dollars a year, let's just say on average. Uh, and they would they would be paying, and if somebody was just working for um, and, and earning a hundred thousand dollars, you're working for a company. How do they save on the tax impl- uh, process by investing into RSPs? How does it work? Can you okay. just break that down for us? Sure. So let's say someone makes hundred thousand a year, mm-hmm. and uh, normally or generally scenario is that they can invest eighteen percent of their earned income into our RSP. So that is their kind of contribution guideline. After tax. Yes. Now, <clears throat> people who have not contributed at all, and if they are Canadian resident since 1990, yeah. they have all those contribution room. Now, the best way I always tell my clients is to find out your room. The best way is log into online CRA account, and it will basically just tell you how much contribution room you have rather than you just keep this calculation in your head because sometimes you get messed up because there's also penalty for over contribution. Right. So you can't actually go over your limit either. So let's say $100,000, someone's marginal tax bracket is let's say 40%. Then the 40% of 
whatever the the income they they are they are earning that's how they can save the tax now what happens is this when they invest money into rrsp so for example let's say someone is investing before the deadline of february 29th this mm-hmm. year that can go towards their 2023 income mm-hmm. or it can go towards their 2024 income mm-hmm. they have to decide okay but either way what happens is after the deadline they will get a t slip from the fund company mm-hmm. where the money has been invested yeah and that's just it's called like rrsp contribution limit and then that's how they they can actually file the tax return and they can give to their accountant and the accountant just calculates everything for them and then based on that it will be determined that how much tax refund they will get right okay yeah. so i'm not going to give the right number as to how much it all depends on what the income yes, yes where they stand as a family what other benefits they have been receiving their family dynamics and structure and everything i know for investors that are out there in the market that um so the rules in canada are uh, in, when it comes to real estate that if you own your primary resident of course it's, it's tax uh, tax exempt um uh, but if you own investment properties and you sell one of those investment properties uh the profits that you make on that investment property um is 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 you would have to pay capital gains tax capital on gain. it right yeah. so so you're looking at about uh, uh you're paying 25% on 50% of the profits with that 25% that you're going to be paying within that capital gains if you have not contributed to your RSPs that's another component that you can use to help reduce the amount of tax that you would have paid on on the capital gains so you can get that money invest it now into an RSP get your full allowance that that or contribution that you would be allowed and then get that money and then reinvest it. So yes, you're not paying the tax now. You're going to pay the tax when you do want to pull it out at 65 yes. years old or when you retire. And that money now will actually incur and give you a return if you invest it correctly mm-hmm. over the time frame, right? And you got to look at if you know, that all depends on if you're a little bit more high risk or you you know you want a little bit lower risk tolerance and you're okay with maybe certain uh, growth margins per year but that's another way for people that that want to if they have a contributory piece um and and made some money through the capital of investment uh to to contribute into our piece and and let that money continue to work for you it's a great point nick because see people when they make extra money from by selling their home whatever it is whatever it is yeah there is a there is a whole lot of money they have to show when they file the tax return it's true. Yes. and that gets added on top of their income and then they they are heavily taxed on it but if they are already proactive and then they implement some of these strategies then definitely they can benefit from it now like i said there is also an opportunity at that point for that individual to maybe open up spousal rrsp so that way the money can be invested and like for example John and Mary which i talked about so John can still benefit from the tax refund because his income is high and Mary's is not but then after 2 years down the road that becomes Mary's ownership pretty savvy pretty savvy um what are, what are the returns like in RSPs have you seen through the growth of your time you know helping people uh, uh and teach them how the money works So it depends on how the money has been invested. So there are different strategies for let's say just income portfolios, money market portfolios or balanced portfolios, growth, aggressive growth and all those. So depending on how money is invested, that's how that performance will vary. There's also high interest savings account as well for the RRSP. So many a times many of my clients when they are a little bit worried about their capital that's where the money goes in last year the average performance was about 4% on that high interest savings account on the high interest savings account sure. yeah so their capital is still preserved and then whatever extra they make and make can make on top can, of it can you put in a gic you can put it in gic but then generally gic is is right now paying what 5% Yes, but then you have to you have to lock your money and uh, if you break that before the term then there is a penalty there's it comes in a different yeah so many moving parts of that. <laughs> yeah, and then also um higher the interest rate generally speaking you get on GIC more time you have to lock that in as well. Oh, oh right. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, so, so we talked about people that are retiring. Now, yeah. how about people that are just starting out? First time home buyers, tax so, free savings accounts. Why don't we get into a little bit of that? How can we help somebody who's, um, because we got to find creative ways for people to get into the market one way or another, because we know, yeah. you know, the real estate market too is a very big safe haven for people. Um, having ownership is a dream for many. Um, and, and everybody, I think at one point or another should own some piece of property. Um, yeah. how can a TFS, what is a TFSA one? Two, how can how can we use a TFSA to get somebody into the market? So tax-free savings account, again, it was launched by the government with the concept of people should start saving money and then we will give you some sort of incentive because you're saving money. So what the incentive for the tax-free is you put money in. Uh, there's a limit for everybody and it's the same. So unlike RRSP, like I said, that is 18% of your earned income. Mm-hmm. When it comes to TFSA, is um, every year government gives us the limit, mm-hmm. regardless of how much money someone makes. So this year's what's limit, that limit? Like five thousand now? So this year it's seven thousand dollars. Seven thousand. So yes. it increased. But ever since it was launched, uh, the total limit has been accumulated for ninety-five thousand. So let's say someone never opened up the account for TFSA yeah. and has been Canadian resident since two thousand and nine. That person, as we speak, can put 95000 into TFSA. And then that money grows tax deferred. And then when they redeem the funds from TFSA, it, is, it becomes tax-free. It becomes tax-free. Yes. Um, is, that, is a tax-free savings account, um, when, you, when you invest that money, is tax-free? Is that the same? What's the difference between the tax-free savings account now and a first home savings account? Because I think they just launched the first home savings account, if not, I think, within the past year, within 2023. So first, What's the difference between the two? Yeah, so tax-free savings account, when you redeem the money, you can pretty much use it for anything you want. Mm-hmm. First home savings account, just like it says, it's actually for your first home. So if you never had a home, uh, when you never owned a home, and I think it's a great way for people to start understanding and start investing money into the first home savings account. Mm -hmm. So it was launched last year. Per year, you can put $8,000 in it. The lifetime limit is $40,000. So if someone, let's say, I have a few clients who actually started their first home savings account for themselves. Mm -hmm. Some clients started first home savings account for their children. Because you know that someone who is 18, 19, 20 today, Mm -hmm. and you probably have quite a few clients, like there are many clients whose children are now 18, 19, 20, they're still living with parents, but then at some point they want to buy a home. Right. But they probably would not have enough money to put towards the down payment. So some of my clients who are parents, they have started first home savings account for their children uh, since last year. So it's 8,000 goes in that account every single year for the next five years. Mm-hmm. So let's say if I run you through like a, like a scenario, a child is 20 years old, son or daughter, and then uh, parents are going to open the first home savings account as of last year. By the time he becomes 25, that account will have 40,000 plus the performance which it has earned in that account. So depending on the performance, that's how they will end up with the end result. So let's say they might have 55000 or 60000 in that account. That money can now can be used for buying their first home. Now, what is the definition of the first home? It could be anything. It could be detached home, semi-detached, condo, townhome, duplexes, triplexes, fourplexes, whatever <laughs> As long as, as long as they exactly. never got into the market, qualifying before. home, qualifying home, exactly. So, so they as can. As long as it's not commercial based, I that is say. true. Yes, yeah. yeah. so they can take that money out. They can put it into that first home savings account. Now, first home savings account, it is, it is a great way. It's a hybrid model of RRSP and TFSA. So what we talked about for RRSP that when you invest money into RRSP, you get the tax refund based on your income but then when you put money into tax-free savings account and when you redeem the funds 
you actually take that money tax free, mm -hmm. right? This home, sorry, first home savings account, that is a combination of both. When you put money in it, you get the tax refund on contribution of 8,000 every single year. Mm -hmm. So you get the T slip when you file tax return, that's how much refund it kicks back, okay? After all these years, when they redeem the money out of that account, which is 55, 60,000, everything what they've earned on that account, tax it is tax-free, okay? So it is a great way, I think, in my opinion, uh, for especially anyone who always wanted to buy a house, but they mm -hmm. never were able to buy a house because of the no down payment or very little money for the down payment. I think this is the great segue for them to start using money. And just keep that in mind. If it's husband and wife, they both have limit for 40,000 each. So if they both start putting money in it, they can go up to 40,000 each on them. That would be almost over $100,000 after five years which is great so for people that are yeah. renting right now and you guys are married and you haven't got into the market yet yeah a good way to start really saving is getting some of those funds putting them into uh, a first-time home buyer savings account and then grow that through investments and maybe different funds yeah uh, have that money grow for you until you're ready to get into the market once you've you you, you withdraw that money it's tax free and now it gives you the opportunity for a nice down payment to put into your first home so those are really good uh, good options for people out there. Plus, they also save on the uh, uh, first-time home buyer land transfer tax as well through that process. So there's a lot of benefits yeah. um, that are out there and established to get creative to help people get into the market. They're they're there for a reason, and the government's implemented that. You know, it is also a great program for anyone who is still in the university, or let's say they are done with the university, they just started working. Now they're in a relationship. They're not going to get married maybe another for five, six, seven, eight years down the road. This is a great way to start this as a stepping stone. So that puts them in a position that as soon as they're married, they already have their home to live in. Yeah. Right. Now that account can remain open for 15 years. So it's not that uh, once they are done with five years, they have to take money out and they have to buy a home. Mm -hmm. They're not forced to do so. Mm -hmm. So that money can still stay invested for year number six, seven, eight, until they are not ready to buy a home. And it's the same thing even with RSPs, I believe with first time home buyers, is that there is an option that if they do have RSPs, they can contribute those funds tax free into home ownership. And they have 15 years, I believe it is, to pay it back? Yes, that's correct. Which is, yeah. which is, a, which is a wonderful option for them too as well. Yeah, so they can take uh, up to 35,000 per person. So again, if hus husband and wife, they now have $70,000, which they are taking just as a down payment. And uh, they can buy pretty much, like they can start from something small, depending yeah. on where they want to buy. Yeah. Uh, but that gives them an opportunity to become the homeowner. Which is great. Yeah. Yeah. And there's options out there for, uh, and we're specifically speaking right now to first time home buyers, those who have not gotten into the market yet and should get into the market right <clears> now, because I do believe. Uh, we're recording this at the beginning of February of 2024. Um, my prediction is is that we are going to get into a very strong market. I can see the markets really surging. Uh, we're going to see, I think by March, you're going to start seeing an increase in price points. Uh, things are selling. There's activity. Uh, we're multiple offers. We've just, you know, we have one that we're working on right now. We're already starting to generate quite a bit of offers on it. Yeah. I believe that... It's imperative that people should really look at finding creative ways to get within the market uh, so that they can start, you know, having that dream of ownership. We talked a lot about FHSA. We talked about TFSA. We talked about RRSPs. Um, there, there's so many moving parts and different components for people to really start saving and investing to, to build up. You know, a, a good sum of money, tax-free, of course. Um, there, there's many different benefits on it. One thing I want to touch on, and and you've done quite a few for our team, and we've we've I think we've closed in a few transactions for 2023. Was called co-equity partnership. What is co-equity partnership? So it is it is a mortgage, and uh, it pretty much works for someone who wants to buy a home. Mm -hmm and they don't have enough money, which is 20% as a down payment. And uh, so it basically just gives them uh, a kind of an insight of 
let me what let me just work on my my down payment money whatever i can just gather collect yeah. or whatever i have so far and then um, they can also apply for that program which is co equity program mm-hmm. it's just a standard process just like a mortgage mm-hmm. and uh, they go through it and then once they qualify so what happens is that from that uh, the total 20% down payment mm-hmm. um, client can put anywhere from 5 to 15% as a down payment mm-hmm. and the remainder of the portion comes from the lender and there is no interest on that portion so let's say client has only 10% and the 10% comes comes from the lender then there is no interest on the 10% of the down payment and then whatever is left that is their own mortgage to just continue with the mortgage and then they just start paying the mortgage payments with whatever interest rate they have qualified for does the so the 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 co-equitor partner comes in they'll cover the difference of the 20 percent. so let's say you have 10 percent coverage the co-equity partner comes in covers the other 10 percent. how much of a percentage do they own in equity of that house now that would be in that 50 50 because 10 person comes from the client and 10 person comes from the lender so uh what happens to the to the mortgage payments who's who's in who's there to cover those mortgage payments so client has to pay the mortgage payments based on whatever the mortgage payments are and when they sell the house or when they buy the lender out either way the mortgage amount actually comes back to the client not the interest uh, but just the mortgage principal comes back to the client which means then that should be where every payment that's getting paid on that uh, mortgage, all the principal then goes back to the actual client and not the lender. That is correct. Which is a great program. Yes. But it would make sense for people to want to get into the market short term. Yeah. Right. Because now if you've and can you can you use your contributions to your RSPs as a first time home buyer to get into that? 100 percent. 100 percent. Whatever you have, let's say from RRSP. You can take that 35000 each for husband and wife. You can put that towards the down payment. Or now, once someone starts building this first so, home so savings you can account. Get, can I combine, even in any property, can I combine my RSPs and my FHSA Absolutely. together yes. to put as a down payment towards a property and then go as, as well involved with a co equity partner? Absolutely. And I think this is what most people need to understand moving forward is especially after COVID, so many things have changed, uh, including people's thought process and the economy and then everything. Right. So everybody, I think at least most people, I would say, have come to the realization that they need to start saving money somehow. They need to invest money. OK, so um, anyone who does not own a home yet anyone who have children who are still living at home or anyone who have children who are just maybe 18 19 20 still in the mm-hmm. university i think every parent or every adult depending on what stage they are in their life mm-hmm. they should start saving money into rrsp and start building your first home savings account mm-hmm. now how much they can put in is completely up to them uh whatever way they can put in they already know the limit every single year and that's how much they can put into their account so what happens down down the road after four five six seven eight years when that individual is ready to purchase a home they have now enough money to put towards the down payment Mm -hmm. and they become the homeowner which i think is the best way for someone to get into the home ownership because you know nick many families out there they have been renting for years mm-hmm. they cannot even think about becoming a homeowner right yeah. now you want to them it's not a reality yes you want them to become a homeowner you want to put them in a home which they own but they don't have money and this is where it comes down to that now they need to become more disciplined and they need to understand how this program works and what it can do for them in the long term that is Mm -hmm. more important and that's how they can start putting money in so my daughter's 16 right now um if i wanted to do that for her can i start it now or do i have to wait until she's a certain age no until she turns 18 until she turns 18 does she have to be uh employed or working generating some sort of income for the first home savings account yeah no 
No. So, yes. So she can actually have the first home savings account. And that's how you can start building it for her. For RRSP, she has to be a taxpayer. She has to be a taxpayer. She yes. has to start generating income yes. for us. Yeah, yes. That's good to know. Yeah. Um, I, I think there's some wonderful insight on all this, Hem. This, is, this has been great. Um, is there anything else you want to add in regards to uh, helping people with the, with their investments and, and dealing with financial? Because I do believe like there's so much that just came out of this program today. Uh, myself personally, I'll just talk, I'll talk a little bit about this is, is that there's, there's when people say, oh, well, the dream of having ownership or, or, or buying a property in my lifetime is not the reality because homes are so expensive. Yeah. There, there is an issue in Canada right now where uh, for many, this, this, this opportunity or this dream of having this, this property for some, and I talk to, I have young staff, you know, I talk to my kids' friends, I talk to parents about getting them and try to educate them to want to start building uh, and, and, and buying real estate for them now because the price of real estate is only going to increase. In the next 10 years, I see a 50% increase in the market for sure. Not for sure. I, I That's my prediction. I do believe that people should really look at, parents should really start looking at how I can invest for my children yes. into the real estate market one way or another. And these forms that you provided to the table help them to 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 start wanting to put some savings aside for the children to get into the market itself and if you start at 18 years of age um and they grow until they're 28 man you can really generate some really good wealth into that to give you that contribution to put into the market no matter where it is co-equity partnership rsp <clears throat> many different factors um is there anything else or any advice that you would give somebody um, as a parent right now for their child to help them through this process? A couple of things. I think I have spoken about this in my previous podcast as well is uh, number one is discipline. So once you decide that I want to do this, you start putting money away based on whatever program you're going with. And the best way someone can be uh, discipline is they can start investing money on a monthly basis because mm-hmm. that way the money comes out of their bank account and then they just don't even realize after a certain point mm-hmm. um, just the way they're paying off other bills yeah i do that with my kids our right? esp for their for yeah. their you know school savings is i don't even see that money we, we contribute towards it yes. when they got to go to school at least their school is paid for at the time and yes and that and that was a really beautiful government program that was set up too as well yes. because the government would equal out that payment. Yeah. For every 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 dollar that you put in, they matched it. That's true. Yeah. So they they match twenty percent on it, and then that's how uh, it can be utilized for their education purpose as well. Right. But going back to my point is, regardless, if you want to save, invest, you have to be disciplined with it. That's number one. Number two is when you invest, understand the rule of 72, which we have spoken about as well. We have discussed about it mm-hmm. in the previous podcast because it's We've very... we talked about that, yeah. So if people don't know, you can go back. We talked about that rule. Exactly. Rule, which was people really need cool. to know that, well, how, where, wherever they are saving money, how is it growing? What is it going to do for them down the road, like five, four, five, six years later, right? And uh, number three is invest with professional management. Um, that's what I, I always say. I myself invest like that. I put into um, like a portfolio which is professionally managed by the, the portfolio management team. Mm-hmm. You're uh, diversified. It allows exactly, you to be diversified at that Exactly. Point. Because I don't, I don't have time to just kind of keep chasing for money, just trading money on a daily basis. And You're not in that game. No. So um, that's how that's how I do it. That's how I have established my own finances. And uh, same thing I've done for my family as well. So that's 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 the thing I can I can talk about is just take the professional management advice and then that's how you can continue with it. So a lot of times when somebody has a little extra cash or they want to talk about RSPs. Uh, you do many different factors. So you go to their house, you sit down, you yeah. look at what what's the best course of action for them to take. Yes. Um, but I also know that you also offer different programs from Pi America. I think there's insurance uh, options as well, life insurance, things of that nature. Yes. Yeah, so we have we have very broad spectrum when it comes to financial services. Yeah, so, very broad. So investment is one where it is RRSP and uh, TFSA and pension plans and RESP for the kids' education cash accounts, non-registered accounts. Then we have the full mortgage services. So 
we deal with many different lenders when it comes to mortgages and uh, we have variety of insurances available uh, so there are so many uh, so many yeah there are like, i think more than 10 15 types of insurances we offer so and we also offer legal services so we put our clients in a position that now they can have wheels and power of it's attorney. a one stop shop with you guys eh yes exactly that's yeah. good it's like an amazon so yeah. <laughs> you, you just want to buy anything you just go to amazon you just buy yeah. And it's just the platform. That's yeah. what it is, right? So people yeah. just come to me just for that platform because they like the convenience. They like the one-stop shop. And they also like, more importantly, that everything is under one umbrella. And they can come for come to me for anything and every, anytime. If somebody wants to get a hold of you to, to reach out to you, how do they do that? The best way they can reach out to me is my cell, 416-580-0000. Uh, I love it. Old school way, just give me a call. I'll answer at any time. And that's that's, that's the true power of success, yes. is making sure that you're available. Uh, Ham, it was a pleasure to have you on for the third time. I know there's going to be a fourth time coming down the line. We have always so many wonderful topics to talk about. Um, RSP season is coming right around the corner. So this this episode should be launched next week. So there's still going to be time to, to contribute. Uh, if anybody has any questions in regards to it, uh, you got uh, you got Hem's number right now. Give him a call. He'd be glad to come and see you uh, if he needed to. But uh, that's a wrap for another show of Revealing Real Estate. We thank you guys for all tuning in. Thank you to our wonderful uh, followers. And please uh, share this episode, share this podcast to those that you think would benefit from this. Uh, if you can comment, uh, like it, that we, we greatly appreciate it. And subscribe if you're watching this on YouTube. Please don't forget to subscribe. Um, we want to keep doing this for you guys and keep getting you guys all educated into many different options uh, of building wealth and, and growing your finance and your and your portfolio um, in many different ways and sectors on it, right? So learn how to make your money work for you and make money while you sleep. Take care. Looking to buy or sell? Call a team you can trust. Don't believe me? Our Google reviews say it all. Put us on your lawn, your house will be gone. Theoptteam.com.